Hey guys, I hope you're all doing good. In this video, I'm going to be setting up a pipe flow simulation using SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, okay? The reason why I'm choosing this particular problem is it actually helps you learn a lot about computational fluid dynamics. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the geometry in SOLIDWORKS. There are certain things that you need to do in SOLIDWORKS to run CFD. So in this video, you know, I'll be paying attention to that. To get started, I'm going to click on the top plane and then uh, I'm going to create a new sketch. All right, so let's create a circle. So in this case, I'm not uh, shooting for a particular geometry. I'm just uh, eyeballing. So as long as it looks like a pipe, I'm good. Uh, now, one thing you can do is after you practice this exercise, you can actually look up for accurate pipe flow geometries for which experimental data exists. You can run the CFD simulations and then compare the results uh, with those experiments. You know, that's a very nice exercise. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on extrude and I'm just going to extrude it till 0.3 meters. Again, this is just an arbitrary length that I'm assuming. Okay, so that looks like a pipe. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a small thickness to the pipe. So I'm going to create on shell and then I'm going to select the top phase and the bottom phase. And let us see, um, maybe 0 0.01, 0 0.001, so 1 mm. And let's take a look at the preview. That looks okay so i'm just going to click on that and that's my pipe okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to simulate the flow through this so let us call this guy as inlet and then the other guy as an outlet now when it comes to computational fluid dynamics we are interested in simulating the flow inside the pipe okay so what we need to do is we need to create something called as a computational mesh inside the pipe and in SOLIDWORKS, it uses an automatic mesh generation algorithm for which it requires that the entire solid is closed, also called as watertight. So in this particular case, you know, I'm trying to simulate the flow through this pipe, correct? So the bottom, so, so the top and the bottom faces needs to be closed, okay? And how do you close that? You do that by creating something called as lids. This is specific to SOLIDWORKS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to flow simulation and you can see that there's this button called create lids. So I'm going to click on it and make sure that you select the face that you want to close. So in this particular case, I'm selecting this guy and you can see that it immediately draws uh, this blue color shaded area. Now that's going to be the inlet of my pipe. Okay, you need a closed volume in order to create your mesh successfully. And similarly, I'm going to click on this face and then these are going to be my two lids okay so when you rotate the geometry you will see that these are closed now if you pay attention and if you know a little bit about cfd already then this is like a non-manifold edge if you don't understand what that is then don't worry about it but basically you need these lids to close the geometry now different cfd codes have different practices but the concept is you need a closed surface so that you can create the mesh either inside or outside the geometry, okay? Now, once this is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the flow simulation. The easiest thing to do next is use the wizard utility. So let's just click on that. It's, going, it's asking me to save the geometry first, so I'm going to save it. Uh, maybe go to documents. Actually, you know what, I'll save it in a different folder. Okay, and I'm going to create a new folder called pipe flow. And let's just call it pipe. Okay, so launch the wizard again. So this helps you set up your CFD problem quite easily. And I'm going to call this pipe flow. With respect to configuration, configuration name, don't worry about it, we'll figure those out later. You can add comments in case you're interested. So click on next uh, unit system. I prefer SI units. If you are used to some other unit system, go for it. Click on next again. So in this particular case, I'm interested in doing an internal flow, right? We are trying to simulate the flow through the pipe or not the flow or not the flow on top of the pipe, right? If you have to do that, then that would be an external flow simulation. Again, don't worry. We'll be looking at those examples in upcoming videos. So internal and then consider closed cavities don't worry about this option leave it as default we'll talk about this 
all right what are the physical features or what are the additional physics that we want to include in the simulation now remember that in computational fluid dynamics whenever you include these physics additional equations or additional terms or the way the equations are solved gets changed okay and we will be looking at those things in upcoming videos as well so in this particular case you know i am not interested in heat conduction so that's not checked there is no radiation so that's not checked there's something called as time dependent right so I have not checked that. So what does that mean? So in a pipe flow, the simulation is what is called as a steady flow simulation. That is, after some point in time, your solution is not going to change with time. Now this might sound a bit funny to you if you have never been introduced to CFD. But the whole idea is, at the end you get a solution that does not change with time. Okay, and that's what is called as a steady state solution. Now there are different ways to get to the steady state solution. Uh, it depends on how the equations are solved. We will be talking about those things a little bit later because you know those are slightly higher level concepts. So you need to know things like uh, time integration or time marching in order to understand those uh, terms. Okay. So in this particular case, we are interested in steady flow simulations, and we are not going to include the effect of gravity. You can do that if you want to and there's no rotation as well so rotation is required in case you're trying to simulate something like a centrifugal pump so moving on the next thing that i'm going to do is define the fluid that is participating in my simulation i'm going to be doing a gas flow here so air is my working fluid just click on add so that you know it's getting added now in this particular case the flow type is laminar and turbulent what does that mean well, you are basically trying to tell SOLIDWORKS what's your flow regime. Now, if the inflow velocity is such that the Reynolds number is greater than 5000 or 10,000, you know, you can directly use, um, you know, turbulent only. That is going to kick in the turbulence solver. If you're saying laminar, that means that the Reynolds number is really low. If you're saying laminar and turbulent, then the flow solver is going to be using computational models that are valid for both laminar and turbulent flows. Now we'll be talking about what these models are in later videos, but in general, that's the idea. Now in this particular case, high Mach number flow, uh, not really, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to click on next. In addition to this, you can also add something called as surface roughness. So surface roughness is an important parameter that you need to include if you know, your, uh, pipe is made up of something like cast iron basically the pipe is not smooth and hence it's going to cause additional pressure loss okay now if you include a roughness height then certain equations are solved which will basically account for this roughness and it would yield an additional pressure loss okay so for now i'm not going to touch that just click on next uh, all the thermodynamic properties and parameters, they look fine. Here you can see that there is velocity parameters. Uh, you can initialize the velocity. You can say that at the start of the simulation, the velocity is so and so, but in this case, I'm not doing that. Similarly, turbulence properties. You know, you can set up some turbulence properties. These things can be really important, but for us, we are not going to worry about it. Like I said, these are things that we will slowly learn in the upcoming videos. Click on finish. And immediately you can see this box, right? Basically what SOLIDWORKS is doing is it's calculating something called as a bounding box. It looks at your geometry. It looks at what's the minimum max, maximum max, minimum Y, maximum Y, minimum Z, maximum Z, and then it draws a box around your model. And that's what's happening here. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is, um, you know, choose, uh, boundary conditions right click and i'm going to type insert boundary conditions okay so here what we're going to do is we are going to basically say that at this inlet the velocity is like one meter per second so the first thing i need to do is i need to right click and then click on um, select other and i'm going to select face at lid 2 and then bracket you need to see pipe okay make sure that you do not select this you know, you need to make sure that you select this. Okay, that is basically saying that at that phase, the velocity is going to be one meter per second. So I'm clicking on that. And here I'm choosing inlet velocity and let us say one meter per second. 
you are specifying the velocity magnitude here okay and you are not specifying the component of velocity 